Welcome to the Amphenol Broadband Solutions Training on the FDE Fiber Demarcation Box with Enhanced Access. In this training, we'll review the FDE features, we'll show how to mount and ground the FDE, show the pigtail and adapter installation, cable installation and fiber routing configurations, customer jumper connection and routing, and enhanced access door for easy connector cleaning. The FDE Enhanced Integrated Connector Cleaning Access Door Demarcation Box is designed to enable quick and easy fiber splicing and connectivity for indoor applications. The demarcation box layout enables a variety of splicing and patching combinations. This product requires some assembly and it is recommended that along with this video you read the installation instructions before starting the installation. When installing the FDE, make sure to follow all safety precautions. Let's look at the features of the FDE. It's made of an aluminum powder coated housing. The doors can be bolted securely and has knockouts for optional locks. There's also a knockout for an optional padlock hasp. The doors swing open 180 degrees for easy access. There are four mounting keyholes providing secure, stable mounting. There are separate compartments for the carrier fiber and the customer fiber. The doors are weather resistant. The top and bottom have entry and exit ports with rubber grommets. There is a grounding bonding point in the bottom, which is one of two grounding bonding locations. There are two carrier fiber entry ports with clamps two customer fiber exit ports. On the carrier side, there's a layered fiber storage routing that keeps the fiber storage behind the components and the fiber splice trays. The center demarcation wall has two positions that accept a variety of bulkhead fiber panels and also passive modules. The fiber splice trays provides organized fiber management in a compact and efficient footprint. Splice sleeves and passive component modules can be mixed and matched on the tray for maximum flexibility. Two fiber splice trays can be installed. An access door on the customer side of the enclosure provides a generous opening for a cleaning tool to reach the optical connectors, resulting in a more craft-friendly design. The access door can be opened without the use of tools and can only be opened from the inside of the enclosure. On the left side is a second grounding bonding point. The FDE is a modular and configurable product. Multiple component kits are available for the FDE that encompasses a wide variety of components for varied applications. In this video, we'll only be covering just one of the many configurations. To mount the FDE, locate a solid suitable mounting surface. Use a supplied template or the FDE Level the template using a level on the level line. Drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole at the four screw locations. Install the screws leaving the head of the screws just off the mounting surface. Install the FDE over the four mounting screws and lower it into position. And tighten the four mounting screws. Next we'll install the ground feed through kit, the GFT. The ground location is protected from paint coverage by a mask, and this must be removed first from the ground area to expose the metal. From the left side, knock out the knockout, and use a pliers to remove the metal plug. Install the ground feed through from the outside of the FDE, making sure to insert the long thread end first. On the inside of the FDE, install the nut on the threaded stud. Using a 7 16 inch torque wrench, tighten the nut and torque to your company's approved level or 40 inch pounds. Install the remaining nuts and washers. If using a shielded incoming cable, ground the cable using the optional B Bond cable grounding clamp and 5 inch stranded ground wire. Now we're ready to install the connector adapter panel into the bulkhead wall. Using the upper bulkhead opening, and center hole positions, insert the connector adapter panel into the upper bulkhead opening slot. 
push in the bottom and top push pins to secure the panel to the bulkhead and the connector adapter panel is installed. A second device can be installed in the bottom bulkhead opening. First the pigtail bracket must be installed besides the lower bulkhead opening prior to inserting any pigtails. Install a second device using the same procedures as before. If installing cassette, no pigtail bracket is required. If no second device is required, install a blank cover. The Universal Fiber Splice Trays provides organized fiber management in a compact and efficient footprint. Splice sleeves and passive component modules can be mixed and matched on the tray for flexibility fiber configurations. Multiple kits are available that encompasses a wide range of components for varied applications, such as fusion splicing, ribbon splicing, PLC or FBT components, mechanical splicing, or passive modules. The universal splice trays have two tray recesses that accepts cradles or passive modules. Position the cradle in the tray recess. Slide the cradle outboard until it's engaged with the tray at the corner. Lay the cradle flat and snap the center inboard tab of the cradle under the center tab of the tray and the cradle is installed. Check to make sure that all the tabs are engaged and the cradle is laying flat. To remove, apply pressure against the cradle until the center tab clears the tray tab. Then lift the side of the cradle up. High DT tray modules are designed to integrate directly onto the universal splice component tray with no intermediate mounting fixtures. The installation and removal is the same as the cradle modules. The FDE can accommodate two fiber splice trays. If using more than one splice tray, it's recommended to place the first tray in the lowest position. Position the fiber tray into the fiber tray tower with the hinge tab in the desired hole. Squeeze the top splice tray bracket and position the tab into the hole. The fiber tray is installed and ready to be configured. Now we're ready to install the pigtails. First remove the protective dust cap from the adapter panel. Next, remove the connector's protective cap. Before connecting or after each disconnect, it's recommended to perform a cleaning procedure. Follow your company's cleaning procedures. Install a connector into the adapter panel and repeat the process for the remaining connectors. Next, we'll route the pigtail to the fiber tray. The pigtails will be secured to the FDE with Velcro strips that are attached to the top of the fiber bend control bracket and on the left side of the box. If these are not installed, install them. Remove the fiber splice tray cover. Identify the first Velcro wrap location. Wrap the Velcro around the pigtail. Press the Velcro wrap into the Velcro strip. While making sure to create a generous transition with the pigtails, identify the second Velcro wrap location. Wrap the Velcro around the pigtail. Press the Velcro wrap onto the Velcro strip and route the pigtail behind the tray tower to the opposite side of the tray to the attachment point. Identify the felt wrap location, making sure to allow enough length for the tray hinging. Then mark the pigtails at the top and bottom of the tray attachment point. Wrap a half inch felt strip around the pigtail to protect it at the tie wrap locations. Use two tie wraps to secure the pigtail to the T-slot of the splice tray. Ensure that the pigtail bundle is secured to the tray, then cut off the ends of the tie wraps. Route 1.5 service loops in the tray and trim as desired for splicing. Install the fiber tray cover. Lift the fiber tray into the closed position. Route the strap through the top slot of the fiber bend control bracket. Press the strap end to the Velcro and the pigtail installation is complete. Next we'll install a single cable. Remove the rubber grommet. 
Modify the rubber grommet by cutting it. Use the cable preparation lengths table in section 5 of the installation instructions to determine the loose buffer tube length. Measure and cut the cable to expose the proper loose buffer tube length. The above lengths will provide about 36 inches of bare fiber for splicing on the tray. Loosen the single cable bracket. Install the cable into the single cable bracket so it extends past the cable bracket. Tighten the cable bracket. Install the rubber grommet into the port fully. The sealing flange should be even with the sealing flange of the box. Lower the fiber tray. Remove the fiber tray cover. Route the loose buffer tube clockwise around the slack basket area. Route the loose buffer tube down behind the right side of the tower tray and over to the left side tray attachment point. Mark the buffer tube at the top and the bottom of the attachment point for the felt wrap location. Wrap the felt wrap around the loose buffer tube location. Measure 36 inches from the felt wrap location and cut the loose buffer tube to length. This length will provide for several re-splicings. Use a buffer tube stripper to score the buffer tube. Place the stripper close to the felt wrap location and rotate the stripper. Snap the buffer tube and remove the buffer tube to expose the fibers. Use two tie wraps to secure the loose buffer tube to the T-slot of the splice tray attachment point. Cut off the tie wrap ends. Wrap the fiber around the fiber tray fiber storage area. Install the splice tray cover. Install the documentation label. And close the fiber tray. Close the carrier side door and use a can wrench to tighten the security screw on the door. Next we'll install the customer side jumper. First remove the rubber grommet. Cut the rubber grommet and reinstall the grommet. Route the jumpers through the grommet leaving about 15 inches of slack. Route the jumpers around the compartment placing the jumpers behind the metal tabs. Remove the adapter plate connector protective cap and remove the connector protective cap. Before connecting or after each disconnect, it's recommended to perform a cleaning procedure. Always follow your company's cleaning procedures. Next, install the connector. An integrated access door on the customer side of the enclosure provides a generous opening for a cleaning tool to reach the optical connectors, resulting in a more craft-friendly design. The access door can only be opened from the inside of the enclosure and no tools are required. Press the panel retention tab, open the hinge side panel outward, and use the access panel to clean the access panel connectors. Close the door and use a can wrench to tighten the security screw on the door. In this video, we reviewed the FDE features, showed how to mount and ground the FDE, showed the pigtail and adapter installation, cable installation and fiber routing configurations, customer jumper connection and routing, and the enhanced connector cleaning access door. Thank you for viewing this training on the FDE Fiber Demarcation Box Enhanced Access. For customer service, contact us at 1-877-272-4984 or at customerservice at allsystemsbroadband.com.